Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Next witness, please. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Chairman Salas and Chairman Hill and the rest of the uh, committee. Um, my name is Keith Grant. I'm here to represent um, the Independent Massage School Association of California, which is an association of schools teaching only massage, um, and also to represent the Hands-On Trade Association. Both organizations are strongly in support of CAMTC continuing as a public benefit um, corporation created pursuant to California corporation law. And the language is pursuant um, to state law, uh, pursuant to the Massage Act. Uh, I assume that creation word also stipulates uh, maintaining and acting pursuantly to the state law, which uh, I'd like to commend um, as a past board member, um, Jill England in very strongly uh, advocating for that and guiding what was permissible and not permissible. Um, in terms of the Hands-On Trade Association, which is an individual practitioner member association, we have the same uh, problem of ability to practice that's been done. The only thing I'd like to add to what already has been said is uh, AB 1147 created a stipulation in Section 460 of the Business and Professions Code, not 4600, that made those credentialed by an organization such as CAMTC on the same footing as those licensed in a healthcare profession. And so there is a prohibition in the law against prohibiting practice of the profession or prohibiting practices of the profession. Uh, I guess the, the key word is prohibit, where the, that stipulates just something in ordinance that explicitly prohibits, or whether prohibit is interpreted as to make effectively unavailable. Um, and I think enough has been said on that by Tony and uh, Beth May. Uh, in terms of IMSAC, um, you know, we regret losing a voice on the board because independent massage schools are not really represented on the CAMTC board and they have different needs from the and issues than the larger career schools. Um, there are two issues that IMSAC currently has um, mainly due to the revoking approval of schools that were closed. Now, BPPE has a STRIF fund, Student Tuition Recovery Fund, for students who have paid tuition and the school closes. So the students are, at that point, protected from loss of value or taking of value. Uh, if a school has now closed as of July 1st, um, in many cases, what the students have paid for will become valueless because CAMTC will no longer accept those transcripts. So a student has paid in good faith the stipulations of the time that it be BPPE accepted or uh, approved and that it wasn't unapproved by CAMTC. And now suddenly that education will be valueless, um, unless the student actually is contacted in time and files by the end of June, which is only a few months. And there are students in the, or there are practitioners in California that still don't even know that CAMTC exists. So, so there's the likelihood that a lot of people will be um, sort of left hanging. There's also an issue with specifically with Harbin Hot Springs that they can't have a site visit now because in the Valley Fire they lost their site. It, you know, it burned down and how those students are handled smoothly because they do have past students and they will have students again. But if they can't get approval in the meantime, uh, you know, that's a problem. So, IMSAC is st 
still very positive on CAMTC and hopes to work with Great. the legislature. Thank you very much. And, Appreciate yes. that. So if we could stay to the point of the continuation of, yeah. of, the, of the council. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Karen Boulanger, and I'm on the faculty of De Anza College in Cupertino. I have a research appointment at the Stanford University School of Medicine, where I conducted a clinical trial on the effects of massage on the pain and anxiety of children after open heart surgery. In addition, I provide therapeutic massage at Stanford's Children's Hospital and to the South Bay Area community. De Anza College is the first community college in California to offer a state-approved certificate and degree program in therapeutic massage. The program is based upon the medical model, which requires comprehensive knowledge of anatomy and physiology, kinesiology, contraindications, business, and ethics. The intent of the program is to prepare students for gainful employment and to professionally interact with many different members of the healthcare community. However, students who complete the program are often shocked and demoralized by the oppressive regulatory environment. As educators, we are doing our job. Please help the graduates of our community college launch a career and thrive at doing what they were trained to do, serve the health of the public. We support the continuation of CAMTC as a nonprofit organization administrating voluntary certification and school approval programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Hi. Um, uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak to all of you, uh, Assembly Member Salas, Senator Hill, committee and staff. My name is Rhonda Lynn Cutter and I've been a massage therapist since 1982, but today I'm here before you as chairman of the San Rafael Massage Ordinance Advisory Committee. Um, and I would like to share some of our insights from 16 years of experience working on the ground as consultants to local government here in San Rafael. Well, not, not quite here, just down the way a bit. <clears throat> Our shared goal is to create a balance between providing enough necessary tools to assure adequate enforcement of reasonable laws, yet allowing professional massage therapists such as myself to practice our healing craft without undue restrictions. Predictably, each time the issue has been addressed by the city, officials and staff, often new to their jobs, look to us to solve the age-old problem. How do we get rid of prostitution in massage establishments? The most important factor we have found to a successful massage program is consistent and ongoing enforcement of reasonable laws. Often cities look for ways to eliminate these problem businesses through paperwork, levying fines, and regulation alone, and they forget to enforce their massage establishment laws. This is what happened in many cities across the state as a way to save money after the economic downturn in 2008 and the following recession. The apparent proliferation of illicit massage establishments was not due to the implementation of the CAMTC, the passage of SB 731, or AB 619, but more likely caused by the lack of funding for enforcement of existing massage programs. This was certainly true in the city of San Rafael. They simply lacked the funds and resources for what was seen as a non-essential task. MOAC is focused on finding solutions. Our co-created solutions working with city every time have been a massage ordinance that includes three major components. First, clear educational standards and requirements for practitioners. Now this has been made much more easy, easy by CAMTC. Two, a registration permitting process with the simplified method for revoking these permits for practitioners and for owners. Third, and most importantly, consistent and ongoing enforcement of existing massage ordinances and laws. Through robust code enforcement and regular inspections, the city of San Rafael was able to close down more than 16 problem businesses and lifted their moratorium early. Their studies showed that conditional use permits and zoning restrictions would not help them in any way differentiate between problem businesses and therapeutic ones. In fact, these high barriers to entry typically favor the commercial sex establishments with their deep pockets and resources to pay for additional permits and lawyer fees. 
Since the passage of AB 1147, many cities have overstepped their bounds, at least in spirit, by implementing moratoria on massage establishments and placing excessive fees, additional requirements such as fingerprinting. We need your help to find the right balance. So please keep the California Massage Therapy Council and volunteer statewide certification. It's nimble and it's growing in effectiveness. Please improve the next version of the Massage Therapy Act, building in incentives for local governments to report all violations in a streamlined fashion to CAMTC. The Massage Ordinance Advisory Committee of San Rafael would be happy to meet with you and any other stakeholders to brainstorm and co-create real solutions, long-lasting solutions statewide as we have in San Rafael. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here this morning. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Chairperson Hill and Chairperson Salas and members of the committees and staff. My name is Shana Faber. I am an assistant city attorney for the city of Vacaville. I have 25, 24 years experience as a municipal law attorney, and I work very closely with the Vacaville Police Department in closing down illicit massage establishments, or illicit businesses. Uh, I was recently appointed as a board member of the CAMTC, but I'm here today to talk to you on behalf of the city of Vacaville. We are one of the many cities that require CAMTC certification for massage therapists to practice within our city. What we have found, and we have uh, been requiring that certification since 2010, is it provides a fair across the board process for qualifying massage therapists to practice in Vacaville, <coughs> and it expedites the approval process because the qualifications and backgrounds have already been vetted by CAMTC and we do not have to duplicate their efforts. Since 2009, we have developed a very close, mutually cooperative relationship with the CAMTC. Uh, we notify the CAMTC promptly when we make an arrest for um, sexually re related misconduct at these illicit businesses. And what's been a very useful tool to us is uh, the email notification that we receive from the CAMTC when they are disciplining a certificate holder in our jurisdiction. This mutual cooperation between the city of Vacaville and the CAMTC helps to keep our community free of illegal businesses that prey on our citizens and give the legitimate massage therapists a bad name. Because the CAMTC is not a state licensor board, the CAMTC can discipline certificate holders on an expedited basis for prostitution and sexually related misconduct. In Vacaville, at any given time, we have 40 plus massage um, businesses. Since the passage of the Massage Therapy Act, I, I can give you that statistic, our city has been successful in closing down nine of those, nine businesses where we've made arrests for illicit sexual activity. To provide an example of how effective the CAMTC has been in assisting our city in curtailing illicit sexually related activity, we recently denied the renewal of a business license to an individual who had his CAMTC certification revoked for allegedly sexually molesting two of his clients. In that case, the CAMTC was able to hold a hearing and revoke that individual's certification in less than two months from start to finish. If the CAMTC were to be reconstituted as a state licensor agency, the process for revoking this individual's certification could have taken up to a year or longer, placing many more women potentially at risk in our city. Uh, in sum, the CAMTC works. We fully support their, sta their status as a private nonprofit corporation. We believe that restructuring the law to require a state licensing agency would be a step backward in the regulation of this very important industry and could flood our city with the illegal activity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Chairman Hill, Chairman Salas, committee the committee and staff. My name is Carol Shipley. I am um, the executive director of the Stanislaus Family Justice Center in Modesto. Um, prior to that time, um, I was a prosecutor in the Stanislaus County District Attorney's Office for 31 years, the last nine of which I was assistant district attorney. In that assignment, I was um, asked by my uh, district attorney to facilitate the creation and development of an anti-human tra 
Trafficking Task Force for our county, um, which in fact was formed in December of 2011 entitled the Heart or Human Exploitation and Recovery Task Force. Around this time as well and soon after, there was a proliferation of illicit uh, massage parlors. I'm saying that in, and I'll call them brothels as they are. Um, they were investigated um, but and found that victims were being trafficked from China. Um, they were terrified, these victims. They were promised jobs um, and that they could send the money then back to their families. Um, however, um, now embroiled as a prostitute, um, they're embarrassed, ashamed, they fear the police, and they fear returning home, and they are trapped. Um, the CAMTC uh, Government Affairs Director, Beverly May, and their Director of Professional Standards um, Division, Richard McElroy, uh, came and offered training to um, the Municipal Police Department and the other law enforcement agencies as well as um, the District Attorney's Office. Shortly after that, um, Ms. May began um, coming to our meetings and becoming a very active participant in the anti-human trafficking uh, movement in Stanislaus County. With her help, we've had further trainings for law enforcement. Law enforcement has had access to the information that CAMTC holds um, regarding certificate holders. Um, they, she has provided updates and legislation, and she has been able to share what other cities and counties and city entities have been doing to eradicate this problem. This culminated in the Modesto City Attorney um, writing an ordinance, which I believe is about to be, the 30 days is about to pass to make it, to allow it to be implemented, requiring that the massage business, businesses be certified by CAMTC. Um, with this um, it comes on the heels of the fact that legitimate um, biz massage businesses um, want to have this type of scrutiny. They want to be able to practice their, um, well, have their practices ongoing without problems from other illicit um, and other clients who are calling up asking if they conduct their illicit, illicit business on their premises. Um, without CAMTC's help um, and continuing as it currently stands as the nonprofit, um, we wouldn't be able to start to curtail the illicit businesses that are happening in Stanislaus County. Um, I ask for your, um, I thank you for your attention and ask that you do continue CAMTC in its current standing. Thank you. Thank you. Good yes, sir, good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, I'm Andrew Garston uh, with Massage Envy. Thank you, Chairman uh, Hill and Salas and committee members and staff. Uh, I am the regional developer for Massage Envy in Los Angeles. Uh, and I'd like to just briefly say Massage Envy uh, family of franchises in California, there's about 180. We employ about 5,400 therapists. We have see about 300,000 members of the public every month for massage services and do about 3.7 million hours of massage a year in California. Uh, if there's a public face of a massage business, professional massage business in the entire country, it's gonna be Massage Envy. Uh, the things that we experience, uh, when we experience problems, that means that the independents and the small practitioners experience them much, much more acutely. Um, the first thing I wanna say is that we are held to the highest standards when it comes to employing people and we really appreciate the uh, private nonprofit nature of CMTC and the ability to uh, screen therapists based on arrest records and not uh, uh, discounted convictions. <clears throat> the second thing is that we definitely appreciate the schools monitoring. Illegitimate schools means that we can't trust the pool of applicants that we have coming to us. And it really penalizes the small schools that uh, can't compete when schools are just selling diplomas. <clears throat> the biggest problem that we probably see right now is with land use. We have 88 cities in Los Angeles that we're responsible over. We have, it's completely unpredictable what we're gonna see from one city to the next. I have police officers going into existing locations saying now you have to put in showers. And then I have to go and yell at the city and say why showers? That's nothing to do with massage. I mean they go oops, we made a mistake. I'm doing it the same with LA County right now. I have cities that do moratoriums. Not only do they more, do moratoriums on establishing new, opening new places, they do no, moratoriums on permits for new therapists. I have a business that has 25, 30 massage therapists. We'll lose one or two people a month. And that means that my business is actually being forced to decline, even though I have huge customer and public demand for my business. There's something wrong, there's something intrinsically punitive about it. Um, 
uh, it, the uh, the CUP's uh, small cities, uh, small cities with ten uh, with a hundred thousand people, six month process. It's impossible. No landlord's going to hang out and wait for us for six months uh, to start our, you know, and, and get no rent at all, or no client is going to be paying fifteen thousand dollars a month in rent for six months. It's impossible. And the CUPs are truly outdated uh, mechanisms. But the own, my own city, where I we have a business in Glendale, they're reimposing CUPs. My business is held up as a model for what every massage business should be in the city of Glendale, and yet they're gonna make me go through a renewal process when I've had zero complaints in 11 years of operation. It doesn't make sense. Uh, plus, their entitlements to go with the land, and they complain about the revolving door of owners when they close one place down. A CUP is typically an entitlement that goes with the, with the location. You uh, get rid of one owner, and now you're back with another. Uh, the, the League of Cities, had five years to cynically fight the California State Massage Ordinance from 2009 to 2014, fighting about land use regulation that they were so offended that they had lost, when it was actually a very simple, small exemption for places that could prove that they were 100% certified therapists working on staff. The truth is, is that the cities, I think, very cynically never enforced the laws before, don't enforce the laws now, didn't enforce the laws during the 2009-2014 period and still continue. There's more illegitimate places now than there were two years ago when we were here, not less. Every time the city of LA closes place down, it's huge headlines in the LA Times. Yeah, they closed two places down. There's 300 of them in the city of LA. What's wrong with these people? It's because the cities don't want to do enforcement. There's nobody that's really, the victims of massage will never speak up we're the victims. You know, the professional business, in, the professional industry is the, the victims, and we're spread out all over the place. We don't constitute a large voting block that's gonna go and take, make the city of Los Angeles stand up and be heard. The public are victims. The public who are confused about where are legitimate places and not legitimate places. But the politicians can make a lot of hay out of prostitution, which is an extremely emotional topic. I really do think that the problem's been one of cynicism. I think that uh, San Rafael and San Mateo have figured out how to do something progressive. It'll take the wind out of the sails of a lot of less substantial politicians who have built their careers, and we've seen them, around, massage, uh, around pr prostitution in massage businesses. I have uh, locations right now where they're making the owners take tests. I mean, it's, the whole thing is just crazy. Uh, the league had five years to prepare for getting their land use regulations back. The league is probably the only place that every city in the state of California can go to and say, how should we do this? And the fact that they can stand there and say, uh, two years later, or a year later after the, the law changed, but two years after these hearings, we've got nothing, and the cities all say, we've got nothing from the league, there's just something wrong with that. I think the league is just like these little rinky-dink cities. They don't care, they like this as an issue. It's given them more cojones than they've ever had before. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I'll, I'm gonna try to uh, excise chunks of this that have been said before. Thank you, you're a wonderful uh, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll do what I can. I, um, my name's Adam Gordon. Um, I am the owner of Oxygen Massage Therapy in San Francisco. I employ between 26 and 30 massage therapists in three locations. And I'm also uh, speaking on behalf of the San Francisco Massage uh, Advisory Committee, uh, which represents, and over the last year represented a number of individual and uh, business, massage therapy businesses in the city. As San Francisco was bringing its laws up to date for the 2015 passage and the return of zoning and local regulations, um, uh, the biggest point I want to say is San Francisco seemed adamantly uh, committed to bringing back their exact old regime of uh, punitive zoning, conditional use permit, which I wrote a lot about. I, I think we've talked about that enough, but I want to just uh, support your questions and say, yes, it's a terrible process. Yes, it's going on. Yes, it's discriminatory. And yes, it's very expensive. Um, and just highlight that in San Francisco in particular, which is one of the most um, scarce uh, quantities of commercial real estate, um, 
landlords have no interest in waiting six months or putting a contingency on a lease for a conditional use process. It's effectively a moratorium. Um, and we said this much to our city and our city went right ahead and steamrolled over us. So when the League of Cities stands up here and says they're gonna take a year or two to bring themselves into line with the spirit of the law, I can't help but question the, um, the validity of that statement. Uh, the other thing I'd like to highlight that San Francisco does is uh, even when we are not doing new construction, which most massage therapy businesses are moving into established commercial already built out locations, they require a Department of Building Inspection inspection. And this can be a quagmire. Uh, the Department of Building Inspection, I believe, has 12 sub-agencies inside of it. And if they find, in one case, a single electrical outlet that needs to be replaced, the process of then coming into compliance requires us to hire a contractor or an expediter uh, which can cost three to $5,000 um, and then delay our opening as well with additional costs. Um, the only other thing I wanna point out is that San Francisco claims that they require this to protect the public and yet no other healing arts professional is required to go through all these hoops. Uh, estheticians, um, chiropractors, acupuncturists, none of them have to have a conditional use permit. None of them have to go through a Department of Building Inspection inspection. Um, and these all amount to either a moratorium or an incredibly, incredible chokehold on businesses opening. Um, so I'm here to ask once again that we return uh, to giving CMTC certified businesses relief from these punitive local ordinances. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate your coming this morning and for your testimony. I think it really indicates that if, if a city or a local jurisdiction embraces the CAMTC and, and works with them and communicates and, and uh, tries to engage in, uh, in that relationship and then working with the, the city and the, the CAMTC, we, we do solve the problem and it seems to work. And I think that's what, what the message is that I'm hearing from, uh, from all of you today. So thank you for coming today. And I know some of you came quite a distance, so I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. So now what we'd like to do is, is hear from members of the public and people who would like to express their feelings of support, uh, or if you have uh, any concerns or oppositions with that, it would be great uh, to hear that. Uh, if you're going to repeat what we've already heard, it may be best just to, to make your comments and support, then that would be great. So we wanna be as brief as possible if we could. I think we've heard a lot of testimony that's been very helpful as, uh, as we move forward. So please, ma'am, it's good to see you this morning. Good morning, uh, Chairs uh, Hill and Salas, members of the committee and staff. Um, I'm Jeannie Martin, the president of the California chapter of the American Massage Therapy Association, and I would like to concur with the extremely well presented, uh, 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 <laughs> excuse me, the extremely uh, efficient presentation of my colleague, Mr. Psychotis, um, and echo those sentiments. I would also like to uh, let you know we've brought many concerned massage professionals professionals here who are uh, worried about the onerous regulations imposed by local government. I'd like to invite them to stand so that you may see them. These are health care providers. These are not criminals. We just ask that you treat us respectfully as health care providers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. May I approach the podium so I can set my things um, down? Is that possible? Sure, if you'd like to, well, not just uh, stay right there, that'd be fine, sorry. Okay. All right, thank you. So good morning, Chair Hill and Solis and committee. Um, my name is Zola Neely. I am actually here on a, another topic. I'm sorry to change the subject of everything, but you have, um, you know, you have this here and there's some recommendations in here that need to be addressed and they're sort of being overlooked by, you know, AB 1147, which I understand that there's a few things I'd like to address if possible. Um, I am an ex-CMT. I am from Penn Valley, California, and I am a member of AMTA. And I'm also one of the CMTs that lost their license, you know, kind of a bad apple. But um, I would like to say I, am, uh, I was a very proud member of the CAMTC since applying in 2011. And I'd like to show my support for the continuation of the CAMTC. But 
there's some concerns that I have uh, with my experience with them. And I'd like to address the fact that it hasn't been that positive for me. I've dealt with many misunderstandings, uh, miscommunications, a lot of apologies and slow responses and a lot of website issues. All of these are recommendations that you have addressed in the past and the CAMTC has responded to them. Um, I was certified by an alternate pathway, a kind of a grandfathering. Uh, my experience and the passage of the MBLEX is what gave me the CMT. Um, I'm a good therapist. I was in very good standing, but during the time I was diagnosed with stage three cancer, my um, CMT happened to lapse during that time, and it was unknown to me. I was completely unaware of this due to a new policy that the CAMTC has said they do not have to communicate. It's a courtesy. So I, did, I have not received an email from them since 2013. And so when this happened, I w it was only two months after uh, the very short allowed six months grace period that they give for recertification. And so I, you know, plead my case because most state models have a two year recertification where you pay your late fees and you and do CEUs and then your license can be reinstated. Also, um, there's medical hardships given for people like me in most states also, so I would like that to be uh, addressed under recommendation number four, where you're addressing um, continuing grandfathering and alternative pathways also. Um, I, yeah, I beg the CAMTC for an extension, and they if said- I could make a suggestion, if you could, I know it sounds like you have a specific concern that- uh, That's recommendations I wanted to address. I, I understand, but we're trying to get now just kind of brief comments on this, and I understand you have concerns on those recommendations, and we'd be happy to talk with you afterwards to see how they're being addressed, if that works for you. Well, um, I, I'm actually going to request that the grandfathering and the um, alternative pathways continue for the next four years as I support the CAMTC continuing. And I'd also like to request that the recertification model and um, a medical hardships be modeled after other states. Very good, thank you. Thank well, you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for your, your testimony and for being here this morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, assembly members and supporters of the CAMTC and fellow therapists. My name is Jennifer Menudo and I am a CMT. I am part of CAMTC and I am AMTC. I'm glad that our voices are gonna be heard today. I'm a proud member. I applied in 2014 and was approved in 2015, which was a five month process. I had my ducks in a row. It was a five month process. I joined the ranks of CMTs in 2005, became a member of the AMT at that time. I graduated from a collegiate m massage therapy program, costed me $14,000. This was eight months of me and my family's precious time. I'm addressing assembly number, recommendation number four. I was accepted into the uh, CAMTC through the grandfather alternate pathway as well as Zola through my education and experience. I have not taken the approved exam. If this approved exam has to come about and come into fruition, then um, I would be one of those that would get my license taken away because my school was closed and um, uh, I had to prove all that and fight my way to get to where I am right now. So I just highly recommend that you take my situation, my sister's situation and every other therapist's situation into account other than just this human trafficking situation. Very good, I agree, thank you. Thank you.